Let us worship God. He has gained renown by his wonderful deeds. The Lord is gracious and merciful. Our daily text, the watchword says, Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. The hymn writer says, Purge our souls of selfishness, cleanse our hearts of bitterness, lead us back to righteousness, save us, Lord, or save us still. The doctrinal text. Jesus went, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives, and the disciples followed him. When he reached the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not come into the time of trial. Luke chapter 22, verses 39 and 40. The support in him verse, My Redeemer, overwhelmed with anguish, went to Olivet for me. There he kneels, his heart does heave and languish in a bitter agony. Fear and horror seize his soul and senses, for the hour of darkness now commences. Ah, how he does weep and groan, or rebellion to atonement. Let us pray. Loving Savior, on this day we remember your last evening of fellowship with your disciples, a night of prayer, abandonment, and betrayal. May we examine our hearts this day and recommit ourselves to lives of willing obedience and a commitment to you in response to your matchless love. May we, O oh Lord, continue to receive from you what you have done for us as we recall your last week of passion here on earth. May we be moved to accept the salvation which was wrought by that mission, by that ending. So, guide us to this night and draw us close to yourself. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Let us stand and join in the hymn. 576 with deep devotion.
you may be seated as we welcome you to this Monday, Thursday service in our community when we review and recall the passion of our Lord his last week on earth. We especially welcome you here to the Faith Moravian Church in Six Laws, St. Philip, as the two congregations of the pastorate, the Bethlehem Congregation and the Faith Congregation, come together in this joint service for Monday, Thursday, including the commemoration of the Last Supper. We therefore say a special welcome to all who are joining us online, following the service online. We welcome you to faith. And of course, we welcome the members of Bethlehem, since they are our special guests tonight, but we are all sisters and brothers in Christ. And this is our sister congregation. We say special words of welcome to the Bethlehem members tonight and our technician, Brother Pyle, who will be doing our recording for this evening. Our organist, Brother Worcester Pyle. And so we continue our reading of the Passion of Our Lord. The Supper. The Supper. Jesus said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the wine until the day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. The hymn 572 in that same night before his death. Thank you. 
with R of G S. After seeing this, the news was troubled in his spirit, and the fairy brother too. I tell you, one of you will be famous. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of who he was speaking, and they became greatly distressed and began to say to him, one after another, Surely not I He answered, He answered, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will be famous. The Son of Man goes as it is risen, as it is risen, written to him. But what is that one for whom the Son of Man has betrayed? It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, brother, who replied, You have said so. One of his disciples, the one whom he was loved, was replying next to him. Simon Peter therefore mentioned to him to ask Jesus who he was speaking. So while we're coming next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it who is asking? It is the one to whom I give the piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when he had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one at the table knew why he said this to him. Some thought that because he just had a common purpose, he just was telling him, Why what we need for the first or that he should give something to the poor. <coughs> so after receiving the peace of him, he immediately went to him. Three hundred one verse three hundred and five verse one guiding the fold of the nation. The vine and the branches. I am the true vine, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no Every branch that bears fruit, he proves to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, as I, as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those abide in me, and I in them, bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whosoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch that withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. 
My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my command, you will abide in my love. Just as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. I have said these things to you, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command you, I do not call you servants in love. Because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends, because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from you, everything that I have heard from my father, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the father will give you whatever you ask him to do. I am giving you. These commands, so that you may love one another. Our hymn is 444, verses 1, 2, and 3. 444, verses 1, 2, and 3. Christian hearts in love united. Seek a Lord in Jesus. Yes. <coughs>
If the world hates you, remember that it hated me before you. In the world, you will have trouble, but be brave. I have come to the world. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. If they were not, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you. And after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know my father too. From this moment, you know him and have seen him. John Mark remained by spirits like number 277. <laughs> shall be satisfied. Have I been with you all this time, Philip? said Jesus to him, and you still do not know me? To have seen me is to have seen the Father. So how can you say, let us see the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak as from myself. It is the Father living in me who is doing this work. You must believe me when I say that I am the Father and the Father is in me. Believe it on the evidence of this work. It for no other reason. 
if for no other reason. I tell you most solemnly, whoever believes in me will perform the same works as I do myself. He will perform even greater works because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask for in my name, I will do, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If I ask for anything in my name, I will do it. Hymn 352, verse 1. With God, unbelief, my Savior is near. Because he abides with me, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Judas said to him, Lord, how is it that you will reveal yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home to them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my word. And the word that you hear is not mine, but it's from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you, but I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Okay, 174 verses 1 and 6. Our blessed Redeemer, here we breathe his tender last prayer.
the gift of peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You have heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you love me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. I will no longer talk much with you, for the rule of this world is coming. It has no power over me, but I do as the Father has commanded me, so that the world may know that I love the Father, Christ. Let us be on our way. Holy Spirit, truth divine, number 178, verse 4. spoken these words. He looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you, since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I glorify you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They are yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. Prayer for the disciples. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them in your name that you have given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture may, might be fulfilled. But 
now I am coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have, have joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. And I am asking you to take them out of the world, but I ask you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is the truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent, sent them into the world. And for they say, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in the truth. I ask not only on behalf of those, but also on behalf of, of those who believe in me through their word, that they may all be one, as you, Father, are in me, and I am in you, may they also so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The glory, the glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one as we are one. I in them, and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I desire that those also whom have given me may be with me where I am, to see my glory which you have given me because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous God, the world does not know you but I know you, and these know that you, that you have sent me. I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that, so that the love which you have loved me may be in them. Sacred Psalms, number 360, verses 1 and 2. For you I am praying, I have a Savior, he is pleading in glory, it is to be found on your knees next. Thank you. 
Gethsemane. After Jesus had spoken these words, he went out with the disciples across the Kidron Valley to the place to the place mm -hmm. where there was a garden, which then he and his disciples entered. Now Judas, who betrayed him, also knew the place, because Jesus often met there with his disciples. Then Jesus so went to, with, with them to the place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and they began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and stay away with me. And one electric father, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So, could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray, you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away for the second time and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. Again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for a third time, saying the same words. Yes, so many can I forget? Um, here, 578, verse 3. reflecting on the anguish of Jesus in the task which he did for us. Let us consider our own conflicts from day to day and be able, like him, to say, not my will, but my will. Amen. The other.
lay rest. When he got up from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping because of grief. And he said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. So Judas brought a detachment of soldiers together with police from the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they came there with lanterns and torches and weapons. Then Jesus, knowing all that was to happen to him, came forward and asked them, For whom are you looking? They answered, Jesus of Nazareth. He replied, I am he. Judas, who betrayed him, was standing with them. When Jesus said to them, I am he, he stepped back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, For whom are you looking? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus answered, I told you that I am he. So if you are looking for me, let these men go. This was to fulfill the word that he has spoken. I did not lose a single one of those whom you gave me. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kiss him. Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? Friend, do what you are here to do. Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, shall we strike with the sword? Then Simon Peter, who had the sword, threw it, struck the high priest's slave and cut off his right hand. The slave, slave name was Matthias. Jesus said to him, Put your sword back in its place. For all who took the sword would be perished by the sword. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and officers of the temple, the police, and the elders who had come to him, Have you come out with swords and clubs as if I was a bandit? When I was with you day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour and the power of darkness. This had taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the cloth clothed and went off naked. Jesus, day by day, guide us from that day. 280. Verses 1 and 2.
the examination for us. So the soldiers, the officer, the Jewish people arrested Jesus and bound him. First they, take, they took him to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year, to question Jesus about his disciples and about his teaching. Jesus answered, I have spoken openly to the world. I have always taught in synagogues and in the temple, where all, where all the Jews came together. I have said nothing in secret. Why do you ask me? Ask those who heard what I said to them. They know what I said. When he had said this, one of the police standing nearby struck Jesus on the face, saying, Is that how you answer the high priest? Jesus answered, If I have spoken wrongly, testify to the wrong, but I have spoken rightly. What do you, why do you strike me? Then Annas sent him bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jew that it was better to have one person die for the people. Now the men who were holding Jesus began to mock him and beat him. They also blindfolded him and kept asking, Prophecy, who is it that struck you? They kept heaping many other insults on him. Lord, thy deep humiliation. Hymn 95, verse 2. When Peter and another disciple followed Jesus, since that disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the courtyard of the high priest, but Peter was standing outside at the gate. So the other disciple, who was known to the high priest, went out, spoke to the woman who guarded the gate, and brought Peter in. The woman said to Peter, You are not also one of this man's disciples, are you? He said, I am not. Now the slaves and police had made a charcoal fire because it was cold, and they were standing round it warming themselves. Peter also was standing with them and warming himself. They asked him, You are not also one of his disciples, are you? He denied it and said, I am not. One of the slaves of the high priest, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, Asked, Did I not see you in the garden with him? The bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly, you are one of them, for you are a Galilean. Your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed. Then Peter remembered what Jesus had said, Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Then him two hundred fourteen. No, not despairing thee, come I to thee. No, not distrusting thee, then I believe. 
as we conclude our readings for Thursday, in the last week of Jesus' life, and we prepare our hearts to reflect on the word brought to us by the Reverend Paul Roman St. as we further reflect. Number 214, I invite us all to stand. And no, not despairing me, come I to me. Jesus rode into Jerusalem and went into the temple courts and saw how everything was. He left there and went out to his friends, Mary and Martha, and the house of Lazarus in the village of Bethany. We know the last and fiercest strife was near. And as we have read tonight, Monday, Thursday night, we know that we are on the brink, on the eve of the most momentous battle 
for the final battle the death is yet to come it is on good friday that the battle takes place and it seems as though death has won because the Savior dies. But we know that it was required that one should die. And that John, in his gospel, perhaps best explains to us that this one who would die would die for the sins of the whole world. And yet we know that during these moments there is the challenge for Christians, for disciples, for ordinary persons like you and me to be challenged with doubts and fears. It is only on Easter morning all those doubts and fears are gone. Whatever man feared, whatever his disciples worried about, was no longer something to be considered. For Jesus Christ, by his dying, had conquered death. And by his resurrection from the dead, had destroyed death, hell, and sin. And so we have come up with those two questions which down through the years have been asked, and which for all of us the answer is obvious. Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? So those of us who continue to contemplate the last events of our Lord on earth, we have a growing day tomorrow. Some will not be able to get too involved in the passion as the scourging takes place. One remembers Mel Gibson receiving an innumerable number of lashes in his portrayal of Christ in the passion. And then we have Saturday, the great Sabbath, when obviously, and especially the women who love Jesus, especially his own mother, who cared for him and for whom he cared so much when he made provision for her as he hung there on the cross, pointing her to her newfound son, John. And tonight, as we read it, it's very interesting that John never seems to want to say exactly that he is the person, he refers to the person, the disciple whom Jesus loved. But during that long Sabbath vigil, everyone is concerned with Jesus. And then on Easter morning, the world is stunned because all they find is an empty tomb. And so in our reflection, we thank God that we have the history and we have the words and we have even the songs to help us not only to remember Gethsemane, not only to remember the crucifixion, but also to remember the resurrection.
so that we will have the ignominious death of Jesus to commemorate tomorrow. But even before that, Monday Thursday, we are commanded to take the bread and to take the cup and to remember his death until he should come. So although we despair at what has already happened 2,000 years ago, we glory in the fact that he has made provision that where he is, there his servant shall be also. We can hardly put a foot wrong. I trust that none of us will. We will feel the pain. We will feel the passion. But we will wait. And on Easter, the rest of the world will awake to the wonderful news. He is not here. He is not dead. Not now. I have not yet arisen to my father. So I ask us all to remember tonight at least these wonderful truths that Jesus has given us. His father, our father. His God, our God. He has given us a union which we must keep, which we must live, which we must live out in our relationships with one another. The command, Monday, Thursday. The command, Thursday. By this shall all men know that you are indeed my disciples if you have love one for another. Remember, we're in communion. We're in love with each other. In love with Christ, surely, but in love with each other. And we will show the world that we are his by the love we have one for another. Amen. <laughs>